Midjourney is one of the best AI tools out there for turning a text prompt into an image. I've been using it for a couple of years, and even though there are a ton of new AI tools that could do the same thing, Midjourney still remains the best. And in this video, I want to show you everything you need to know to go from a beginner user of Midjourney to an advanced user, and I'll share with you the right prompting techniques as well. Now, one of the biggest updates is Midjourney is now available on a website. So midjourney.com, you could use it right over here. Before, for the first two years of using Midjourney, I always used it inside of a different app called Discord. So I've been waiting for this website for a long time now. It's available to everyone. Now, to get to this website, if you go to midjourney.com and it brings you to a different page, it may still bring you to this old web page of Midjourney. Just go ahead and press sign up down here, and then you could sign up using a Discord account if you have that, or you could just sign in with your Google account. Now, from time to time, they do have a free trial, but they do remove that sometimes. So if you don't see a free trial, their paid plan starts at $10 a month. Now, once you pick a plan, you'll land on this page and your prompt, your text prompt will go right over here. So I'll just start with a very simple prompt. And as soon as you type in your prompt and press enter, it's gonna go ahead and generate it right here under the create tab. Now I'm gonna go a lot deeper into prompting. We usually don't wanna give it a one word prompt, but you could see I just typed in dog and I got four different variations. With every generation inside of Midjourney, it always gives you four different variations. And then you could edit it from there, which I will show you. All your previous generations show up over here and you could scroll down and view them all. It will keep the whole history. And on the right side, it will show the prompt that I used to generate this with some other advanced things like parameters that we're gonna discuss in this video too. Now, a couple of useful things with the website too. If you go to the organize tab, you could actually organize all your own creations. You could create folders for them. You could search them. So after you create a bunch of different images, this might become useful. And if you go to the explore tab, you could see some of the generation that other people have created. You could click on any of them and see the prompt this way too. So it's a great way to just study prompts and prompt structure using some of the examples here they have on the Explore tab that other people have created. Okay, let me go to the Create tab. I wanna show you a few different things and I'll go one at a time. The first thing I wanna show you is a prompt formula. So every time you prompt Midjourney here with a text prompt, you follow this formula. After I show you that, I will also show you if you click this filter option, all the different things that you see over here and what each of them means, these are gonna come in really, really handy for stylizing and resizing any image that you create inside of Midjourney. Once we do that, I wanna show you a more advanced prompting technique, which is called image prompting. You could actually add an image over here. So if I just drag this one, this image becomes my prompt. And then you'll see little icons underneath it. And I'm gonna to talk to you about what these mean. And then the last thing we'll look at is once you generate an image, you could do all kinds of things when it comes to editing it. So you could vary it, you could upscale it, you could actually edit things inside of an image within painting. So all that is gonna be covered in this video. Okay, let's talk about the perfect prompt formula for Midjourney. It has five parts to it. The first part is format, then your subject, then your details, surrounding and location, then stylization that you could add, and then something called parameters. And I'll show you all kinds of different parameters that you could add to stylize it even further. Okay, now let me show you an example. And then I have an entire PDF that I'll show you that you could download. That's gonna show you a lot more examples you could simply copy and paste. Okay, the very first word I used is illustration. That's the format and you could do ton of different formats. I'll point some out, but drawing is a format. Photograph is a format. That will be the first thing that you put. Then the second part is your subject. So in this case, the subject is futuristic city. In this case, the subject would have been a dog, right? And then the next part of that, the third part of that is any details or surrounding sometimes your location. So the details here are skyline with neon lights, flying cars, towering skyscraper, digital billboard. So you could give it as much detail as you want in the third part of your prompt. Then the next part of the prompt is any stylization. So you could type it out like this, stylized in cyberpunk theme with neon glow and high contrast. And that part, I'm gonna give you some resources too to figure out what you could put for stylization. Again, all these parts are just gonna add to your prompt and make your image a lot more specific to what you're looking for. And the last thing you'll see is this thing that says dash dash. 
and then stylized 300. This is called a parameter, and there are a ton of different parameters that you could add to Midjourney. Now, some of the filters that I'm gonna show you once we click this little option over here is gonna take care of some of that for us. And if you look at any previous generation, right here, any parameters that are used, you'll see them right over here. So this one, for example, had a ton of different parameters that were added like this. So the way you add those, I will mention in a little bit. But if I go ahead and send this out right here, it's gonna go ahead and generate that image for us. So remember that perfect prompt technique, the five parts each time, use it as best as you can. And while that's generating, I'll give you some other ideas on the format. So a format could be a photograph, in this case, a photograph with an antique look is what I used to get these kind of images. Here is another format, I used illustration, or I could say drawing, and I'm gonna get a whole different style of an image out of Midjourney. Another style is painting, and you could even get more specific about what type of painting you want, and you're gonna get a whole different output out of Midjourney there. Here are some examples of logos you could create with Midjourney as well, and then with all these, again, you could ask for 2D, that's one option for creating logos. Another option is you could ask for a symbol or emblem. So a lot of different options by using that format correctly in the beginning of it. Now the subject and detail and surrounding, that's pretty straightforward, but when it comes to stylizing it, there's a bunch of different things you could do there. So using bold lines and contrasting colors, resemblance of Andy Warhol. So you could use specific artist name within your prompt to get different things like this as well. And you could always talk to a chatbot like ChatGPT and ask it for other ideas when it comes to stylizing your images. Okay, back to Midjourney, and here is exactly what I ended up getting with that specific illustration prompt. Now, next, I'm gonna type out this prompt right over here, and I'm gonna show you this option with all the different filters you have. Before the website rolled out, all these things were more manual. You had to actually use dash dash and then that parameter and made it much more advanced for users that were just getting started. But now we could change the image size here using these three options right over here. So if you want portrait, square or landscape, or you could just grab the slider over here and then select any shape you want. So in this case, let's do something more wide, like 16 by nine. You could always double click over here and type in a number too. So if you wanted 15 by nine, for some reason, you could type that out over here manually. And then when it comes to a model, you have a couple different options. I'll show you versions first. So Midjourney has been around for a while, well over two years. And as I'm recording this, we're on 6.1. It might be on a newer version when you see that. Typically you wanna pick the newer version, but since the version five is created some really great images and you might see a little bit of change between the different versions. And sometimes you may wanna to go to a lower version, but typically I have it on a higher version. Now they have three models that are called Niji, Niji 6 for example, that's trained more on anime. So if you're going that route, you wanna pick one of these, but for everything else, 6.1 is what you want. Now you also have two different modes. You have standard mode and raw mode. I usually like raw mode because it gives you more photorealistic and cinematic images. So if you choose raw mode, you may get closer to what you're looking for if you're going that cinematic route. Typically, I like to do the standard variation and the raw and then compare the two. They usually have some subtle differences that makes it a little bit more cinematic when you choose the raw option. Now, personalize is a little bit more advanced, but if you train mid-journey on your taste, then you could use a little parameter, dash dash P, and you'll see it if you hover over the question mark, at the end of your prompt, and it will know your personalization style. And the way you do that is if you go to the task right here, this will let you rank images and it will always show you two images and then you could choose which one you like more between the two. And then after you rate a bunch of them, I think a couple of hundred of them, it's gonna know your personalization style that you could add at the end of each prompt. And that brings us to the aesthetics tab and we could stylize things a little bit differently. We could add weirdness to it and we could add more variety to it. Now by default, you could see weirdness and variety are almost to zero, but you could add a little bit and it's gonna add some uniqueness to your image here. So the lower this is, around 100 or 200, it's gonna do its best to closely resemble what you wrote in the prompt. And the higher this is, this is just gonna do a little bit more freestyling. So again, with any of these, you could hover it over it and they've done a good job explaining exactly what each one does for you. So I'll go ahead and generate this one at a zero and I'll generate it at a maximum just to show you the difference in a second. 
And then you have speed right here. This just depends on the subscription that you picked, but you usually want to stay on fast. Sometimes when you run out of fast hours, this gives you certain fast hours based on your subscription. It will take you down to something called relaxed mode. That takes a little bit longer. And then some of the plants have a turbo mode, which is much faster, but it runs through your hours of generation a lot faster too. So typically fast is what I choose. Now here's that prompt with stylized set to zero. This is what I got. So it doesn't look quite right, but here is stylized set to 500 right in the middle point. And I got something really good here. And here it is set to 1000, which is the maximum. And again, I got some good stuff here. So in this specific case, it looks like I would pick the one that's set to stylized 500 right in the middle there. The one that was set to zero is not great. So that's why you wanna kind of experiment based on your prompt on a couple of different settings every time you generate. Let me also show you the difference between raw and the standard mode that we had right over here. When you click filter, we had these two. So I'll choose a new prompt. And here is what we got with just the standard mode stylized is set to 500 here. So these are the four images we got here. And if I scroll up, this is more cinematic. A lot of the contrast is a little bit more cinematic. He even chose a couple of black and white option. And you could see he adds style raw. And any of these parameters you could manually type. So if I click on it, it's just gonna add dash dash style raw. If I click on this one, AR stands for aspect ratio. So AR dash dash AR five three. But since we have these filters right over here, we don't really have to type these in manually anymore. This is how it used to be back in the Discord days. Okay, now let me show you some of the editing options you have. I'm gonna choose this one right here. So once you like an image, you could go ahead and click on this image here. And then you're gonna see all kinds of different things you could do down here. So the first one is something called vary. And if you vary, you have two options. One is very subtle and the other one is very strong. So if you very subtle, it's gonna make minor changes and give you a version that looks very close to what we have here. If you're very strong, it's gonna actually give you something that might be a lot further than what you're looking for. So I'll go ahead and generate both. I'll very subtle for this one and I'll click very strong. Here we got four different versions on very subtle. You could see the variations are very small and very strong. You could see still the same subject, but the hair is totally different, right? This is very subtle variation. This is a lot more of a variation still. It's not like you're giving it a completely brand new prompt. It's still varying it based on that same exact image. Now, the next option you have is upscale. So this actually lets you upscale your images. Again, if you do a subtle upscale, it's just gonna upscale it the same as the creative upscale, but it's not gonna change much. But if you do the creative, sometimes it smooth out skin a little bit more. So do experiment with both of these when you're doing that. Now you can see the two different versions here. This is the subtle upscale and this is the creative. So the creative actually looks like it changed the lighting. It smoothed out the lighting a little bit on the face. This has a little bit more contrast between the highlights and the shadows. So again, very subtle. So this really depends on your prompt and what you're creating here. And the reason why you wanna upscale, that's just gonna give you a lot more resolution. So if I zoom in here, this is gonna look a lot sharper than the image mid journey usually creates. So I always upscale before I download my images as my last step. And I'm gonna go back to the explore tab and up here, I wanted to show you a different prompting technique, which is actually using an image as your prompt. So you could use a text as a prompt, but if I click over here, I could upload an image again from somewhere else and use it as my prompt, or I could drag any image I see over here inside of mid journey as my prompt. So if I grab it, I could select it right here and I could just type in a prompt. So let's say I want a house, but in this style and I'm gonna use the image prompt and a little bit of text to get that. So that is a very useful option. And you could see what it's done over here. So it's used the prompt, the text prompt house, but it's also blended that with the image prompt. So that's a great way to combine a style over here that you like, that you found on the explore tab or you found online and you uploaded that and the text prompt here. And you could see the difference. If I just type in house, this is what I'm gonna get completely different than what I used the image prompt blended with the text prompt. And when you add an image here, you'll see three little icons underneath each one. So the first one is gonna turn it to an image prompt. So this is the first one that's always selected by default, but this middle one uses it just as a style reference. So it will use that style, but not become an image prompt. So that's gonna give you something different. And then the last one is for character consistency. So if you want your characters to be consistent throughout the scene, this is the last one 
that you want to choose. Again, that's a more deep dive video, but I did want to point out these little icons over here that they've rolled out over the last couple of years, and it's made it really easy to quickly get consistent characters or a stylized reference. And they have something over here every time you select an image called an editor. And with the editor, you have all kinds of different options up here that again should be a dedicated video, but you have a brush and you could erase part of your scene over here and add something totally different. So if I wanted to change out the door, I could go ahead and erase the door over here and then type in my own prompt. I'll type in yellow door over here and submit that. And you could see it's only changing the door. I could see all the different variations over here that I could click on. So this is called in-painting and you could make alterations to just one part of your prompt by erasing it. You could always store and bring it back. You could change the aspect ratio directly from here. So if I wanted a square version of that, I could go ahead and submit this and it's gonna fill the top and bottom for me. Again, if you look on the right side, it's generating and so you do have to click to go to that. It's not gonna take you directly away from that. But you can see it's filling in the top and the bottom of my image if I change my aspect ratio right on top. Very useful option too. And this book I mentioned, we have a version of it that's completely free. It's gonna give you about 50 different prompts that you could use that you could just copy and paste. And we have another 100 page version of it inside of our Mid Journey course. So we have an entire Mid Journey course with over 40 tutorials and it's part of an e-learning platform called Skill Leap AI. And there's over 20 different courses on there on some of the top AI tools like ChatGPT and Dolly as well. And you get access to all of them for one subscription with a free trial. So you can make sure it's a good fit for you. I'll link those resources in the description below this video. I hope you found this useful and I will see you next time.